My dear the beloved in Christ, in this face of the Immaculate Conception, it's fitting that we review some of the words of St. John Eudes, who was one of the first to write about Our Lady's Immaculate Heart and to honor it in this way. St. John Eudes wrote that since Christ is the head of his mystical body, the Church, we as members must therefore be animated by his Spirit. We must follow his inspirations walk the path he has traced, and continue as it were his life on earth by practicing the virtues that were his own. It follows that our devotion to his mother must be a continuation of his devotion to her. We must be filled with sentiments of respect, submission, and affection, which he entertained for her on earth and still entertains in heaven. Mary always held and will forever hold the first place in the sacred heart of her divine Son, She always was and will never cease to be the first object of his love after the eternal Father. And so he wishes that next to God, she should be the principal object of our devotion. For this reason, after the veneration we owe to the divine majesty of God, we cannot render a greater service to Jesus Christ or do anything more pleasing to him than to serve and honor his holy mother. These words contain a depth of meaning showing the importance of the Blessed Virgin Mary regarding our salvation, along with the necessity of venerating her. My dear and beloved in Christ, our Lady is heaven's masterpiece, joy, and glory. No one is above her except only God, and God has given her absolute sway over all created things. St. Bernardine of Sand expressly states that Our Lady was so completely filled with the light of divine wisdom from her mother's womb that from the initial moment of her existence, she possessed a perfect general knowledge of the Creator. Because God loves all things which He has made, so also the Immaculate Heart of Mary was always filled with affection and respect for all of God's creatures. The Blessed Virgin Mary perfectly reflects God's love and concern for us. St. Bernard tells us that Mary's desires Mary desires to become everything to everyone. In her abundant charity, she denies no person a claim upon her heart. She opens the doors of her mercy and the portals of her generous heart to all, that all may receive of her fullness. She brings healing to the sick, comfort to the afflicted, forgiveness to the sinner, and an increase of grace to the just. She even augments the joy of the angels. My dear the beloved in Christ, she gave the substance of human flesh to the Son of God and gives everlasting praise and glory to the Most Holy Trinity. Mary's immaculate heart is an ocean of love for God and all mankind. Our Lady even possesses a special knowledge of those who are most devoted to her. She knows God's designs concerning them, the roads they should follow to reach God, the state and disposition of their souls, all the accidents that befall them, all their possible perils, the pains they suffer interiorly and exteriorly. She knows the temptations that assail them, the evil schemes of their enemies, and all their corporal and spiritual needs, so that she may assist, protect, defend and strengthen her faithful followers, obtain from her divine Son the help they need most, and be herself the best of all mothers to them. This fact alone should motivate us to show a deep love for her. St. Bernard tells us that God has decreed that we should receive everything through Mary. And another holy doctor of the Church adds, without Mary's petition and intercession, Nothing comes to us from heaven. Richard of St. Victor said, How powerful is her love since it overcomes the Almighty. These words have proved true throughout history in numerous instances in which Our Lady has manifested publicly to armies and to nations her power, love, and protection for those who invoke love, honor, and venerate her. In her litany, Our Lady is called Virgin Most Powerful because through the efficacy of her prayer and merits and by the power of her love, she has held back the anger of God and stopped him from punishing sinful people 
and from destroying the world because of its innumerable sins. As a mother of mercy, God has given her extraordinary goodness, meekness, generosity, kindness, and unparalleled power so that she can help protect, comfort, and sustain all those who have recourse to her. She does this continually, not only to individuals, but also to countries, provinces, cities, homes, and the whole world. We must always remember the great love and affection Mary holds for each one of us and turn to her daily for comfort and help in these evil times. There are so very many stories of the great intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary for those who love her. The Blessed Virgin herself revealed to St. Bridget that the guardian angels approach nearer to those confided to their care whenever they hear her, hear them utter her ever-blessed name, Mary, and that Satan and all his wicked angels flee to a distance from those who, in t- their temptations, utter it with confidence and love. I'll end with a story about Blessed Alphonsus Salmeron who never allowed a day to pass without offering to the Holy Mother of God some tribute of homage and love. Whenever he was in trouble, it was to Mary he had recourse. And if he had any difficulty, it was to her that he went for assistance. In all his sermons, he spoke of her. And during the whole course of his life, he tried to inflame the hearts of all who came to hear him with a great devotion toward her. To excite in their hearts a still greater devotion to her, he used to often tell them of the special protection she would give them at the moment of their death, if they did as he recommended. When his own last hour had come, as if to reward him for all that he had done for her, she took away from him the terrors of death. When he saw himself near his end, he cried out, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. O blessed is my life, O Mary, that I spent in honoring thee. Blessed are those sermons in which I extolled thy greatness and thy mercy for poor sinners. Blessed are those labors I endured for thee. And blessed is all that I have done and suffered and written in thy honor, O my mother. Then turning to those who are kneeling round his bed, he said, O my brother, how sweet it is to die when one has during life honored and loved Mary. These were his last words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.